Welcome back to Red Recapped. Today's movie is The Equalizer, released in 2014. There will be some spoilers in the following, so, let's begin the film without further ado. Robert McCall wakes up early in the morning, preparing himself for his job at home art. He is well respected and liked by his colleagues. During lunchtime, he sits down with his friend Ralphie. As Ralphie takes a bite of his sandwich, McCall hears a crunch, realizing there are chips inside. McCall reminds Ralphie that he needs to lose weight for his security guard test. In the evenings, McCall often visits a diner where he brings along his current read, The Old Man in the Sea. A young girl at the diner asks McCall if the man in the book has caught the fish. He responds, not yet. Later, the girl finishes her pie and leaves to find a taxi. McCall's co-workers inquire about his past before working with them. In jest, he claims to have been a backup dancer for Gladys Knight. That night, McCall returns to the diner and coincidentally encounters the same girl. She notices he is reading a different book. A limousine pulls up across the street, and she receives a call from her pimp, Slavi. He informs her that there is a client waiting in the limo, but she despises him and hesitates to go. Eventually, she reluctantly heads outside and joins the client. The following night, McCall finds the girl in the diner with a bruise on her face. He offers her a donut he brought from work. She sits with him at his table and introduces herself as Terry, though her real name is Elena. She hands McCall a CD of her recorded singing. McCall leaves with her, and they take a stroll until a car pulls up beside them. It turns out to be Slavi and his driver, Tevi. Slavi exits the car and slaps Elena. McCall takes a step forward, but upon seeing Tevi wielding a gun, he stops. Slavi approaches McCall and hands him a business card, urging him to request the services of other girls. Another night, McCall revisits the diner and is informed by the manager that Elena is in the intensive care unit, having suffered severe beatings. He rushes to the hospital and finds another prostitute named Mandy at Elena's side. As Mandy walks past McCall, she cries and accidentally spills her coffee. McCall comforts her and inquires about Elena. They take the elevator together, and Mandy reveals that Slavi attacked Elena, but she fought back, leading to severe consequences as an example. Mandy discloses that Slavi also threw battery acid in another girl's face as a warning. McCall glances at the business card given to him by Slavi. He heads to a location above a restaurant where Slavi and his men are meeting. Carrying an envelope containing $9,800 for Elena's freedom, McCall enters the premises. Initially, the goons laugh at him, but when Slavi mentions that the money could sustain Elena for a month, McCall takes the money back and prepares to leave. However, after carefully observing the men and their weapons, he decides to stay, locking the door behind him. He sets the timer on his watch. One of the men aims his gun at McCall, but McCall swiftly seizes the man's arm causing him to accidentally shoot Slavi in the throat. McCall proceeds to stab the second man with a shot glass and the third man with a knife. He then grabs a corkscrew and repeatedly stabs Tevi until he impales it under his chin, ultimately killing him. McCall then moves to Slavi's side and watches him slowly succumb to his injuries. After the murders, a Russian mobster named Teddy arrives in Boston, determined to find the killer. He forms an alliance with a group of corrupt police officers to gather leads. Meanwhile, at work, McCall notices Ralphie's absence and learns that Ralphie has quit. McCall visits a restaurant where Ralphie's mother works, Ralphie is assisting there after a fire allegedly started accidentally. Teddy is taken by one of the corrupt officers, Frank Masters, to the workplace of a gangster named John Looney, as they continue their search for the killer. John insults Teddy and Russians in general, provoking Teddy to strike John with an ashtray while Frank eliminates John's henchman. Teddy relentlessly beats John's face until he falls unconscious. Meanwhile, McCall is seen playing baseball with his colleagues, and Ralphie surprises them by showing up in his security guard uniform after successfully passing his test. The other two corrupt officers, Reamer and Peterson, are dining at Ralphie's mother's restaurant. They extort money from her and threaten further harm if she fails to pay on time. McCall encounters them outside the restaurant and attempts to report the crime, but they dismiss him until he directly confronts one of them. McCall presents them with a video he captured showing their extortion of a store clerk and their confession to starting the restaurant fire. He informs them that they can either return the money or he will release the video to the media. The officers hold McCall at gunpoint, but he swiftly overpowers both of them. They comply with his demand and later return the money to Ralphie's mother. Subsequently, a criminal enters Home Mart and holds the cashier, Jenny, at gunpoint, demanding money from the register. McCall calmly approaches and hands him the money. The criminal also insists on taking Jenny's sentimental ring, which belonged to her late mother. Tearfully, she hands it over. McCall carefully observes details about the man, such as his tattoos and cap, but refrains from taking action due to the presence of children in the store. 
Instead, McCall follows the man outside and takes note of his car's license plate number. The police inform them that these robberies are part of a series committed by the same individual. The following day, Jenny discovers her ring in the cash register. McCall then returns the sledgehammer to its place after cleaning it. Teddy gathers some information about McCall but finds mostly clean records with no evidence linking him to Slavi's death. Teddy, Frank, and another villain stake out the diner while one of their associates attempts to apprehend McCall. McCall senses that something is amiss and questions the man if they are expecting anyone else. Suddenly, a truck pulls up near the diner, obstructing the view for Teddy and his companions. McCall swiftly strikes the man in the abdomen with his book and proceeds to kill him by forcefully slamming his head onto the table, breaking his neck. He then plunges a knife into an outlet, cutting off the lights. McCall calmly exits the diner and discreetly photographs Teddy and his men in their car. The gangsters start tailing McCall to his home. Despite nursing a wound from the earlier encounter, McCall manages to slip away before Teddy and his thugs arrive. Using hidden cameras positioned around his apartment, McCall watches their movements. Teddy becomes aware that he is being monitored. McCall seeks refuge at the residence of his friends, Brian and Susan Plummer. Susan agrees to gather information about Teddy and the people he works for. While she is out collecting information, Brian discloses to McCall that everyone believed he had died, but Susan knew the truth. Upon Susan's return, she reveals that the men McCall killed were members of the Russian mafia led by Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy, whose real name is Nikolai, is the person Pushkin dispatches for important tasks. Reamer and Peterson, who were on Pushkin's payroll, were discovered dead a few days earlier. Their bodies were found with a gruesome act of violence, as their testicles had been removed and forced into their throats. Susan warns McCall that these men won't cease their pursuit until he and everyone he cares about is dead. Determined to protect himself and seek justice, McCall locates Frank and traps him inside his car with a hose, intending to poison him with carbon monoxide unless he agrees to assist him. Reluctantly, Frank agrees to cooperate and leads McCall to a warehouse where the Russian gangsters store their money. McCall successfully gathers all the criminals present and persuades them to surrender. He secures them in a room alongside the money, with the intention of the police discovering them. McCall proceeds to release the captive workers. Shortly thereafter, the police arrive and apprehend Frank along with the gangsters and the recovered money. McCall then accesses Frank's safety deposit box, retrieving his own money, passport, and a USB drive containing additional information about Pushkin and his illicit operations. He locates Pushkin's oil tankers and proceeds to destroy them. Meanwhile, Teddy and his men take control of Home Mart, holding McCall's friends, including Ralphie and Jenny, hostage. They demand that McCall confront them. Tracking his cell phone, the villains await his arrival. In a surprising turn of events, McCall outsmarts Teddy and his men by playing music over the intercom system. He skillfully eliminates each gangster, employing various methods such as using barbed wire to hang one and stabbing another in the neck. He even causes an explosion by using hydrogen in a microwave to kill another adversary. Ralphie attempts to aid McCall but ends up being shot in the leg. McCall assists Ralphie in escaping, and eventually, he confronts Teddy alone. Armed with a nail gun, McCall relentlessly shoots Teddy until delivering a fatal blow to his throat. Three days later, McCall tracks down Pushkin at his residence in Moscow while he's taking a shower. McCall disrupts the lights and water, creating chaos. Unaware that McCall has tampered with the wires, Pushkin calls for his guards. As Pushkin touches the exposed wires, he is electrocuted, realizing too late that the other guards have already been eliminated. McCall returns to Boston and encounters Elena, who is now free from bruises. She informs him that she has found a legitimate job and has taken up reading. Elena expresses her gratitude to McCall for his heroic actions and kisses him on the cheek before bidding farewell. The final scene shows McCall back at the diner, where he receives a message requesting his help. With determination, he simply replies, yes. Thanks for watching. And take care.